Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, and welcome to the video for an unreal concept updating data from a text file at runtime. Someone asked me, do you have the ability to update data from an external source into Unreal Engine at runtime? For example, he has a CSV or comma separated text file that he wants to use to drive data inside the engine. No, unfortunately, as of Unreal Engine 4.23 is not built into the engine and exposed to blueprints. However, if you're using C++, you can expose it to blueprints yourself which is what we're going to be doing. Or you can use a third party plugin that can do it, or you can just do it in C++ itself. What do I mean by exposing data and updating it real time? So let's hit play. And on the top left, we can see some numbers, 100 and 0.5. We go into my content folder. So where my content is for my project, I have a files folder and I have a data.txt file. And if we update the values inside this file and save it, you'll notice it updates it inside the engine. The engine's running. I'm not updating anything directly with this project that's running. I'm updating a separate file that's being read into the engine at runtime. Okay, that's great. But how do we do that? Well, we created a blueprint function library. And you can see it right here already set up. If you don't know how to create one, you can go to File, New C++ Class, Go down to Blueprint Function Library, Next, name it whatever you'd like, and create it. Note you will need Visual Studio, and you will need the C++ tool chain, and all the other things required to compile C++ with Unreal Engine, because unfortunately we are using C++. Now all this code, for the most part, is already inside the engine. If you go through the source, you can find other parts of the engine that use it. And it's using the file helper classes to load up files to string. What we care about is this right here. I'm creating a U function, so an Unreal function. I'm making sure it's allowed inside of Blueprints, and I'm putting another category file IO to sort it. And all we're doing here is basically saying, hey, I'm going to give you back a string after I call load file to string with the file name. So if we go back inside the engine and we look at our Blueprint, here's the node right here that we're using. Load file to string passing in a file name, so where it's at and the name of the file, and it's going to give me back a string. Okay, we look at the code itself, it's really simple. It processes where the file's at, makes sure the file is valid, adds the directory name, so where this project is at and where the content or game directory is, adds the file name that we told it to open up and adds that, and then goes ahead and loads it uses the f file helper function setup, uses the load file to string function, gives us back a result, and we pass it in the file that we want to open up. And if we were to right click on our file helper and go to definition, you can actually see these are all the ones built into the engine. So we can load files into an array, or in this case, we're loading a file to string, or load file to string array, or saving arrays or strings to files. So you have lots of different things already built into the engine, and we're just taking advantage of that and exposing it over to Blueprints. You can ignore this next one. This is just me messing around. Same thing as just loading to a string array. What you care about is this code right here. You can see it here. Should hopefully be big enough to read if you're going to copy this information. You can also go through the source code and find it. It's all available online. Could go back to the header, and here's the header itself. You can simply see that I have these functions and we've added the file helper include right here above our generated in order to access the file helper functions. That's all the C++ code. Once you've compiled, you load up the module. We now have access to load file from string. All I'm doing is taking that file and since it's a comma separated value file, so it's got 0.5 comma 300, I'm using a built-in node called parse into array that takes that string, splits it based on the comma, and gives me back an array, and then I'm printing it out. Okay, cool. How can we actually use this for something useful? Well, here's a sample map, and let me show you. So here's my sample map. We've got some trees, we've got a nice little area, we've got some water and a lake. 
and we want this to all to react in real time. So we're going to feed it in real time data, and as the data is updated, the map is going to react. So we'll go ahead and hit play, and we'll look at our defaults. We have our little puddle here. That's going to show how much water or rain we're collecting. And this is our little tree. And it's going to show which wind. We can see our tree there, our foliage. This is all reacting to wind. We go to our file itself. The first value is our wind value. I'm going to change it to 0.1. And you notice all of a sudden we have a near no wind. I change it to something like 0.8. All of a sudden we have a much stronger violent wind. Because we're just feeding that data into a blueprint. That blueprint is reading that data as it's updated and then updating a material parameter collection with the wind value and all of our foliage is using that value to drive the wind. Let's look at the water. So it's pretty simple. It's a blueprint and it uses the second value to determine the height of the water. So let's say we get a little bit of rain, maybe 350, and our water goes up. Now we've got a lot of rain all of a sudden. We're up to 550. Our water goes up. And it's all handled as I update, as it reads the file, and it simply adjusts it appropriately. So we have two values in our data file. That data file can be updated from somewhere else. Our project's running, it reads in the data, and it updates appropriately. And I can quickly show you that. I simply made a game mode. All it's doing is storing a reference to my blueprint that handles the water, and then calling an event that updates every second. And that event uses our function we created to load that file into a string, splits out that string, saves the first value as wind, saves the second value as water, and then updates it. And again, updates it by taking that wind speed and feeding it into a material parameter collection, and taking the water level and telling my water blueprint, here's the new water level. I mentioned earlier that this works with a packaged project. So let me actually show you that. So here's our packaged project, and you can see it running. However, there's an issue. We're not actually seeing any motion here, and our water is down there. You need to make sure that your file is in the correct spot in order for the package project to find it. So here's our folder, and this is where our package project is running from. If we go into the project folder, you can see we have our binaries, our content, and our saved. And under content, we have a packs folder, and the packs folder contains all of our information packed up. But since we want to update this real time, what we care about is mimicking what we had before, how we've set it up in order for it to work. And remember I mentioned we have that game project directory, which is our content folder. Then inside of there, I told it I wanted a files folder. And inside of there, I told it I wanted a file, a text file called data.txt. Now that I have this file in there, I can actually go ahead and put my information. So 0 0.5 and let's say 500 and save. And you notice it can now read the file since it exists, and it can move it properly, and we'll notice our water went up. And of course, if we were to edit it, maybe down to something like 200, the water is going to go down on the next cycle. And that is how you would read back the data at runtime in a package project.